programmers use loops to repeat a series of steps multiple times without having to type it over again or copy and paste. So this is a really useful tool when you're a programmer because a lot of times you want to repeat things and have things happen more than once without having to click play every time. So we're going to start with a while loop. A while loop has a condition just like an if statement, but an if statement only runs one time and then it continues on through the program. In a while loop, the condition is going to be what determines when this loop stops. So as long as the condition is true, the loop continues. So you have to have some way inside the loop to make the condition false. We're going to practice while loops with the program. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm here in Code Sculptor, and we're going to start our program. We're going to call it the while loops program. And there's different ways to do a while loop. The first way is probably the easiest way, and it's a definite loop. It's a definite loop if you know in advance how many times you want the loop to go. So let's start a function, and we're going to call it definite loop. And we're going to have a counter in this program that's going to tell us how many times we do the loop. And we're also going to create a sum. So let's initialize our variables. Okay, it's really important that you initialize before you try to do an increment or an accumulate. Otherwise, you're going to get an error. Now, since this is a definite loop, I need to know in advance how many times the loop is going to execute. So let's ask. I'm going to call it max value. It's going to be an integer. And I'm just going to ask how many numbers are we going to sum. Then I'm ready to start my loop. This is the header, so remember at the end you're going to have a colon. So while my counter is less than the max value, I want to keep looping. And there's my colon. Now I've indented in, and I'm going to ask for the actual number at this point that I'm going to add to my sum. So let's get the number, let's add it to our sum. This is going to be accumulate, so I can either do it sum equals sum plus number, or if I want to do the shortcut, I'll just do sum plus equals. Okay, it's the same thing. This is my accumulate. Now I'm also going to increment my counter. And this is my loop. So this is the statement body, right, the statement block. And this is what's going to be repeated. It's indented. When I'm finished, so as soon as my counter equals the max value or more, then my loop is going to stop, and then what I want to do is just simply print my information. So let's print the sum, and let's print the count. And that's how many times the loop iterated. Okay, let's run this. So let's call the function and see what happens. How many numbers? Let's just start with three. Let's just do one, one, one. And it helps if you spell everything correctly. Okay. I did one number, the iteration is one. Let's run it again. Let's do six numbers. So I got my sum, the number of iterations is six. That's just as how it would be. If we ask in advance how many numbers, that's how many times our loop is going to iterate. Okay, now a definite while loop is great if you know how many times in advance the loop is going to iterate. But most of the time you're going to use a while loop, you're not going to know. So some other condition is going to need to be met in order for the loop to end and it's not going to necessarily be a counter. So let's do another example here in our program. This is going to be an indefinite loop. I'm just going to kind of copy and paste this, and let's make some changes. So I'm going to call this the indefinite loop function. I'm still going to have my counter, and I'm still going to have my sum. I'm going to do an increment and an accumulate. But instead of asking how many numbers, we're going to have this condition be with our sum, 
and when it meets some max value, then our function, our loop is going to ex is going to end. So instead of asking how many numbers, let's say how big is the total going to get. So we're going to still ask for a max value. But this is going to have to do with our sum, not our counter. So I'm going to change my while loop. Instead of counter less than the max, let's have our sum be less than the max. Now how many numbers is this going to take? We don't know. It depends on the numbers that we have to sum. If the numbers are big, we're going to reach that max value really quickly. If the numbers are small, it's going to take us a while to get to that max value. Now the rest of the, the body statement is going to be the same. So I'm going to keep asking for the number, I'm going to accumulate my sum, I'm going to increment my counter. But I don't know how many times this is going to take for my sum to get to the max value. Let's test this out. So how, should, how big should the total get? Let's say 100. Now it's going to start asking for numbers. So I'm just going to do 5, 10, 20. You can see this is going to take a little while. Let's get a bigger number. Let's get 50 in there. Let's try 41. Okay, the sum stopped at 126. That's when it got bigger than the max value. And it took me five times. If I run it again, maybe I'm going to put the total at 10. I'm going to start at 5 and 6. Oh, it stopped after two iterations. So this is a typical example of an indefinite loop. I've got some target that something inside my loop is going to have to reach. And then my loop will stop. Now there are other types of indefinite loops. So that's one type. Sometimes you might just have a whole group of numbers that you want to sum. You don't know how big the total is going to get. It doesn't really matter to you. You just have to keep summing as long as you have numbers. So another type of indefinite loop uses something called a sentinel or a flag, and when you input that sentinel, then the loop will quit. So let's try another one. We're going to just copy and paste this. Let's make some more changes. Let's see what this other type of loop is all about. So I'm going to call this an indefinite loop with a sentinel. So I'm just going to shorten it a little bit. I'm going to add in sentinel. I'm still going to keep my counter, I'm still going to keep my sum, but instead of asking for a max value here, I am simply going to assign my number some value. It has to be something other than what I'm testing for. It doesn't really matter what you start off with, I'm going to say 1. Now, my sentinel is going to be 0, so when I enter 0, I want to stop summing because I'm not going to add a 0. So I'm going to make my condition the opposite, so if I want to stop at 0, I'm going to keep going as long as it's not zero. So I could do this. While number is not equal to zero, I want to continue the loop. Another option is just to make it less, uh, greater than. While number is greater than zero, I keep going. So both are perfectly fine. Now I'm actually going to ask for the number, enter a number, but I'm going to tell the person what the sentinel is. So I'm going to say zero to quit. Let them go. Let them know. So. Do I want to sum this number? What if they enter zero? I'm going to have to throw in an if statement. So if the number is greater than zero, and notice I'm using the same condition here that I used for your while loop. If it is, then I want to increment my counter and accumulate my total. This is my whole while loop right here. When it's finished, when I've entered zero for my sentinel, it's going to stop and it's going to print the sum. So let's try this one out. So I have my indef loop sentinel. Enter a number, zero to quit. So let's enter five, six, one, seven, eight, ten. Finally, I'm finished. I'm going to enter zero and it stops. The sum is 37, the iterations 6. So this is another really handy way. We've got infinite loop where we set a target value, or we've got a sentinel. Now, believe it or not, there's yet another way to do a while loop.
and that is simply to ask the user if they want to continue. So it's similar to the Sentinel, where you put in zero to quit, but this one is an actual, do you want to continue? It's going to seem a little clunky for this program, but if you were doing a game, this would be really great. You've lost the game, do you want to play again? Okay. This would be great for your Dragon Run program. So even though it's a little clunky for this particular example, let's go ahead and give it a try. So we're going to copy this one, paste it, and make some changes. Let's call this one our definite loop ask. We're just going to ask them if they want to continue. Still going to have a counter, still going to have a sum, still going to, and then for my number, instead of number, let's actually have a variable like choice or answer. So my choice, and I'm just going to assign it something like one. One is going to be yes, I want to continue. Two is going to be no, I want to quit. So while choice equals one, I'm going to keep going. When it's not equal to 1, I'm going to quit. So I'm going to ask for the number. I don't need a sentinel anymore. I'm just going to enter the number. I'm going to go ahead and accumulate. And I'm going to increment. And then I'm going to ask the user if they want to continue. So here's going to be my choice. So notice I always have to have some way to change to make this false. So if choice is my variable, in here I have to change choice. Here number was my variable, I had to change number. Here sum was my variable, I had to change sum. Okay. If you don't change the variable that's in the condition, you're going to get an infinite loop. So I'm going to ask for choice. It's going to be an integer. Continue. And then I have to tell them what the choices are. So one, for yes, two, for no. Now I could use words. So I could use yes or no or y or n, but it is more complicated or difficult to match a condition with a string than it is for a number. So I'm sticking with numbers right now. Let's just keep it simple. So if I say yes, I'm going to ask for another number. If I say no, it's going to stop. Let's try this one. So enter a number, let's enter five. And then it's asking me, continue, yes or no? I'll continue. Enter a number. Continue, enter a number. Continue, enter a number. See, it's a little clunky, but you can see how this would work in some situations. Now I'm tired of entering numbers, I'm gonna say no, and there's my answer. I've got my sum, I've got my iterations. So if you just kind of look back, we've got a loop, a while loop, four different ways. I've got my definite loop, I've got my indefinite loop that looks for a target, I've got a definite loop that uses a sentinel, Oops. and I've got a definite loop that asks if you want to continue. So we've done the same thing four different ways. So let's kind of go back, I want you to go back to each function and I want you to add comments that say how each one is uh, is uh, working. Now after you've added in your comments, they might look something like this. So you want to say the definite loop knows in advance how many times it will iterate. The indefinite loop does not know in advance how many times it will iterate. This one's reaching a target. This one's using a sentinel. And this one is asking the user each time. Let's put it all together. Let's create a main function. I've got a little menu going on here. I'm going to ask the user for the choice, and then just simple if statement, let's call the correct function. So enter your choice. Over here is my menu, definite loop, or the three different indefinite loops. So let's just do an indefinite loop with a sentinel, three, and I'm going to keep entering numbers, zero to quit, there we go. Now this main function only runs one time. So what can we do about this? We can put it in a loop. What kind of loop would be the best one for this one? How about the ask? So I'm going to have some kind of a choice. And as long as that choice is in the right range, I want to keep going. Well, I do have a choice right here. 
So I can actually take all this and I can put it in a loop. Why don't you go ahead and give it a try, come back and see what mine looks like. Okay, so how did you do? You can see what mine looks like. I went ahead and put the menu and everything inside the loop, but maybe you only chose to put this part inside the loop. So any way that you could do it, they got it to work. You could have made this as, as long as it wasn't equals to five, you could have put less than. So any there's more than one way to get an indefinite loop to work. And as long as you did it, then that's great. You can finish up this program and you can turn it in.